I miss practice on Wednesdays for half the time, actually, um, for an organic chemistry lab, which is twice a week for three hours. I do about five hours outside of class to prepare for each one of those days individually. So um, a lot of work for me this semester, but right now it's going well. If you were to talk to someone who uh, maybe might be struggling in school or even a new college student, any advice to just like to succeeding in the classroom? Yeah, it's all about time management. I think playing a sport especially teaches you that um, individually, but um, also it's about just working hard and studying. Uh, I, I'd say I came from a really good background um, educationally, and I really was put in a position to succeed. Um, but I also work really, really hard and study a lot, study my butt off and um, kind of see the results of that. So I'd probably just say to try to manage your time best as possible and, and stay organized for sure. Which might feel better for you, a, a punt pinned down to like the one yard line or maybe getting 100% on your toughest test? Oh, uh, punt. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't wait to play football. School, school, school comes second during the season. Uh, it's still really important to me, but obviously this is a big time commitment. Um, but I'd like to succeed in other areas as well on the side. Blake, is there a vibe to this team that's, that's different than your previous years here? I was thinking about that earlier today, actually. Uh, I try to kind of think about stuff you might ask me, so that's good that you asked. <laughs> um, I got your email. Uh, good time stuff. management there. You yeah, didn't waste exactly. That time. Um, yeah, I think this is really similar to like the last half of the 2016 year. Where we had a lot of confidence. I think I, when I talked to you guys a month ago, I said the same thing, and coming out of the three-game stretch we just had, um, our confidence is at all-time all high. I'm um, going on the road uh, this week. We've won three Big Ten games on the road already, um, so that really doesn't phase us at all. And, and playing at playing at noon is, is just any old game to us as well. So um, the things we've done so far have really prepared us, and I think we're we're prepared to go into Minnesota and, and come out with a win. Blake, uh, it's going to be about 19 degrees, uh, not, not <laughs> counting the wind on Saturday. You know, I hate yeah. to remind you already, but <laughs> for you, you know, when, when you're preparing to, you know, to get that punt, are, are you on the sideline, like, you know, trying to keep your hands warm? You know, how does the cold, you know, impact you? How do you try to stay warm before you go out there, uh, you know, and, and get that punt? Yeah, it's it's all about staying warm on the sideline. The toughest thing is warming up and then having to cool back down and warming up again. So I really try to like stay mobile on the sidelines, stay on the heated benches to keep my muscles warm. Um, especially the, the ball feels like a brick, so keep your feet as warm as possible so it doesn't feel like two bricks hitting each other. That's pretty nice. And then something we broke it at Michigan State, we have new oven mitts that you can put on your hands that you can actually rest on the heated bench. They're nice and warm, so it keeps your hands nice and toasty. So we'll see you with oven yeah, mitts on you'll Saturday? Yeah, have oven mitts on on Saturday. Yep. Like you just mentioned that three game stretch out was so important. You performed at a very high level. Uh, do you feel like this you're playing the best football of your career at this stage? In terms of execution? Yeah, probably from a consistency perspective, um, absolutely I think. Um, obviously starting it off good with Iowa, uh, really helped my confidence and then continuing that against Michigan and Michigan State. Uh, my confidence is really at an all time high and at the specialist position, that's what it's all about. Uh, I have a lot of confidence in my snapper. Um, obviously, Chris Stoll handled the conditions at Michigan State better than probably any other snapper could, uh, anything I could ask for. So um, a lot of confidence in him, a lot of confidence in the shield. They've really um, they've taken some hits the last couple of weeks and haven't gotten a pump blocked at all. So a lot of confidence in them. And obviously, the Gunners give me a lot of confidence as well. Um, so we're really playing at a high level on the punt team right now. And I think, I think we're really controlling field position from that perspective. And then in turn, you pin a, guy, a pin of opponent back inside the 10, let's say, and you head to the sideline and see that defense coming out, which pretty much say it's the best defense of the Franklin era. So are you, I mean, is it just rev you up to see you guys you know, go hunt? I mean, go get it done? Do you have a lot of cheerleaders on that team? <laughs> yeah, they, they give me some props when, I, when they come off the sideline to, to come uh, try to keep them down in there. Uh, I think our defense plays the best when, they're, when the offense is coming out. Obviously, you can pin your ears back and, um, you're just trying to go after the ball, give our offense great field position. So um, obviously that's a motivator for me, putting our, our great defense in a great position to be successful. Um, and then obviously just doing my job for the team, um, helping this team win any way I can. Blake, James was talking about your leadership style a little bit. He said you're not the most vocal guy, um, but and like you're very respectful and stuff like that. Are there times when you feel like you have to, you know, be kind of on, <laughs> and, you know, stand up and have your voice, you know, heard in, among the guys? Or? Yeah, absolutely. There's times I think. Um, just as you said, there's 
kind of different moments that I can pick and choose and be vocal and when not to be vocal. Um, obviously, I think I've done a great job leading by example and kind of giving guys a, a framework to kind of live their life while they're a football athlete. Um, but also, obviously, before games, just giving guys a little piece of encouragement. Um, I'm always telling guys to believe in themselves, have confidence in themselves, um, and then also believe in each other. Um, that's, a, that's a big thing for me on game day. Because um, once I started believing in that um, myself, that's when I started really performing well. So um, if I can take stuff that I've learned while I've been here uh, and then kind of distribute that to our team, that's when I think I can be, make an impact. We've asked James a lot this week about the whole 1-0 and thing, and obviously that's been here your whole tenure. Yeah. Uh, at what point did you maybe individually buy into that? I mean, did it take some time? or? Yeah, it takes some time. It's pretty corny when you, when you first hear it. Um, I'm not sure when he started the, the whole tweet thing. It might have been like last year or two years yeah. ago, um, but, but we thought that was really corny at, at, at first, but um, it really, really works. I think even the guys on the team now will tweet that out, and um, some will say something in the locker room about two weeks down the road, and some will come back at them and say, we're focused on this week, like this week, Minnesota, Minnesota, <laughs> Minnesota. Um, so yeah, we're, we've really bought into that since it's kind of been around for a while, um, and obviously, it's worked this year really, really well. So when it works, people really believe in it. And I know you guys have like the core values plastered in the team yep. meeting room. Where does he have one and O plastered all around the building? Is it? Um, it's in our slideshow every single day. Okay. Um, so it's big. It's the entire screen. It basically takes up the entire screen, one and O. So um, it's always reinforced. Uh, Sunday meetings is always reinforced, and on game day as well. So um, we're always focused on the the opponent and task at hand. Mm -hmm. Going back to James's Twitter, last night, right around when the playoff uh, rankings came out, he tweeted Minnesota 25 <coughs> times on a tweet. How did you find out did about you the playoff rankings? I did. Um, <laughs> how did you find out about the playoff rankings? And, I mean, honestly, how much is, is the locker room uh, kind of at least plugged in somewhat where, where you guys are anticipating that? I mean, yeah, we know about it. It's not like we don't have social media accounts and stuff like that. Um, but I think it's also, uh, like her question, it goes back to our 1-0 mantra every single week. Um, I mean, it's great to be ranked number four. I um, obviously have that kind of respect from, from on the national scale, but it doesn't matter if we don't win this week and don't keep winning. So um, that's what it comes down to. And if we don't win, to, we don't win this week, then that number, one, number four ranking doesn't matter at all. Blake, not just punting this year, but across the board on special teams, you know, there's been improvement. How much of that do you think is kind of a product of, of Joe Lorig and, and what he's brought to the program? Yeah, I actually saw I saw a tweet. It was by ESPN, I think, um, or one of their stats. And I think Memphis and Penn State are one and two in special teams efficiency this year. Um, so obviously he leaves his footprint everywhere he goes. Um, and he's done a phenomenal job here, just really rallying the guys. Um, obviously we had a couple penalties this year we'd like to have back. Um, that erase two touchdowns. That would even boost that number even more. Um, but, but really just the respect that he commands from our team and, and the, the amount of emphasis he puts on it and, and having the staff buy in as well has been huge. I think um, we've helped our team win multiple games this year just from controlling field position. Um, and I believe we rank number one in the country in field position for our defense. Where do you think you know, he's maybe helped you the most or, or you know, how has he impacted you? Yeah, just giving me confidence in, in doing what I like. Um, he comes up to me every single game day and asks, um, where I'd like to kick from, what, what kind of punts I want to do in certain situations. So um, it's really interactive during the game as well. So he's always getting feedback from me, um, kind of giving him my feedback and then receiving feedback from him. So um, just a lot of communication. That's the biggest thing. Um, we're always on the same page, which, which has been huge. Has the rugby style traditional, has that been part of the communication with you guys? Or is it just he's telling you to do one thing, you got to go do it? Yeah, I think in certain situations that's warranted. Um, I think that's what helps our team best in, in certain situations. That's how our punt scheme is. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously I'm in communication um, with him during the game about certain things. So if we're in a certain situation where either that's call or that's checked to, that, that's what we run. So um, I think over the last couple of weeks, I've really worked on that and have a lot of confidence in it. Um, obviously didn't play like I wanted to at Michigan in that kind of style. So. Um, really spent the bye week really working on that, so I feel very confident with that now. Blake, you mentioned similarities that you're feeling from the 2016 team to this one. Aside from being the Big Ten title hunt in November, what what are the vibes that, that are similar? And additionally, is there anything about this version of Penn State football that you feel 
could raise that ceiling even higher than what you accomplished in 2016. Yeah, I think going back to what I said earlier, just the confidence we have in the locker room right now. Um, and then especially with this team, the chemistry is just, it's off the charts. I mean, um, the 2016 team wasn't so much integrated where the seniors and the freshmen were kind of going back and forth and they could communicate with each other and stuff like that. But um, from top to bottom, our team is, is totally on the same page right now. Um, the communication is phenomenal between the coaching staff and the players and back on up. So um, just, just really valuing that right now and, and hoping to continue that. And that's been a huge part of our success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.